So good morning, good morning, and good morning, guys. Welcome to another fabulous episode of Exit Strategies Radio Show. I'm your host, Colvin J. Mudd, broken owner of Exit Realty Low Country Group in beautiful North Charleston, South Carolina. So guys, if this is your first time listening to this show, you, sir or ma'am, are in for an amazing treat because our mission here at Exit Strategies Radio Show is very simple. That is to empower our community through financial literacy and real estate education, guys. We're legacy building. That is what we do. So I want to give a major shout out, huge shout out to you that have been along this ride with us for all this time. We are super excited. We've been bringing to you, introducing, informing, educating, and inspiring so many of you to do major things and to envision a much larger and brighter future for not just for you, but for your family. We talk about generations that are yet to come. And you guys have been out there in the streets working on, I've been engaged by so many of you in random places that say, hey, I listen to your show, keep going. So I'm inspired and motivated by you. And we've been reaching out and we've been bringing you the best guests, guys. We've been doing it. The reason being is because we want you to see much bigger than what is just immediately around you. And today is no different. We're super duper excited, guys, to take this real estate conversation to another level. We have with us none other than Chad Griffiths with NAI Commercial Real Estate. Chad, how are you doing today? I'm doing so well, and I'm very excited to be on the show. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Now, I'm going to give a snippet but I'm gonna let you expand on it. You're in the commercial and industrial real estate sector. You get a vision and have a vision for what yet is to come. You see the landscape before we even see the ground break. So Chad, tell our listeners what it is that you do and how you impact the real estate community. Yeah, that's a really good way of teeing it up. So I like to look at myself as a broker, not a whole lot different than the residential side where you're matching buyers and sellers. Quite often, we're matching developers with a parcel of land, or we're matching a company with a property developer before, like you mentioned, a project even gets developed or even conceived. Quite often, it'll be a company that needs to have a space. They might need a 500,000 square foot distribution center and they've identified a specific area that they want to be, but there's no product. So we've got to pair that company with a developer or a property owner to get them interested in developing something so that they actually have a place to work out of. So it's it runs the full gamut. We can work from the development side, helping developers pair up with companies, or sometimes it can just be a building that's already existing and the landlord wants to find a tenant for it and we try to match them up as well. So it might sound a whole lot more complex, but at the very root of it, we're professional matchmakers. We're trying to put two parties together in the interest of getting a deal done. You may remember the show. I just heard them. There's a matchmaking show. I just heard the music in my ear when you said that you're a professional matchmaker. Today's show for our listeners, guys, is for you. When you drive past that vacant lot and said, it would be nice if there was this here. Chad is the guy that he takes that vision and puts everybody together to make it a reality. He's the guy that is essentially responsible for, if you will, when you drive past a vacant lot, you come back tomorrow and there's a shopping center there or what have you. So Chad, if you don't mind, what drew you to the commercial and industrial side of of the real estate industry? Yeah, I've actually been doing it for a long time. And when I reflect back on it, it's 18 years now that I've been in this business and it was almost accidental. So I started originally in residential real estate in 2004 and I'd bought and sold a few houses prior to that and had an itch to do real estate. And I did residential for a year and I just didn't see myself wanting to do that for a whole career. So I started exploring commercial real estate in late 2004 and found a brokerage that was just so happened to be focused mostly on industrial. So I ended up joining that company in 2005 and I'm still there to actually to this day. So 18 years later, which is crazy to think about that 2005 was 18 years ago. But yeah, just uh, kind of stumbled into industrial, but I didn't really know a whole lot about it. But uh, it was it's really been a blessing because uh, my, I feel I've had a very rewarding and happy career as a result of it. 
I do have a question and it will kind of hit you about trends here shortly, but for context, I think about industrial real estate as the place where the people that live in the houses go to work. And I think about the commercial real estate, if you will, the retail space, let's, let's say that, because it's kind of a hodgepodge in there, if you will, but that's the place where they go to spend their money. And then you have the other sector, which is where people live, where they stay. Now, if you don't mind sharing with our listeners, because we always talk about real estate statistics, the trends in residential, we don't talk about the trends in commercial and industrial. So give us some insight into that, because that means if industrial real estate is increasing, that means there's more places for people to go work. If commercial is growing, there's more places for people to go spend money. How does that translate? So give us some information or give us some perspective on that, Chad. Yeah, I love how you explain that on industrials where people go to work. I mean, you're 100% right. That's, I guess, office is also for that as well. You can have the white collar jobs go to an office and perhaps more of the blue collar jobs go to industrial. I like to break industrial into three subcategories. I'll just make it real quick. Mm -hmm. First, there's warehouse properties. Those are like the big Amazon facilities that we've all seen pop up everywhere. Uh, yeah. That's basically where things are stored. The easiest way to put it, things are stored there for some period of time. Manufacturing would be another one. That's where things are made. I like to use the Boeing factory just outside of Seattle. Four million square foot building. The only thing that they do there is make airplanes. All the raw materials come in, gets assembled, an airplane gets spit out. That's manufacturing where things are made. And then the other one would be flex. And that's a catch-all for everything that could be any other type of use, but it's usually going to be an industrial zoned property. So the city will have designated that an industrial property, but it can be used for bottle depots, churches, office space, self storage, art galleries, you name it. I've probably seen a use that goes into there. Overall, I completely agree with your idea and explanation of it. It's where people go to work. Uh, so I'm going to steal that off you actually. That, that simplifies it even more than I've simplified it in the past. I love it. Yeah, We give freely over here. You should trademark that. That's fantastic. We're, we're going to talk as a whole. So for our listeners, guys, we're not specific to a particular place because well, you know the community that you're in. When you drop, when you leave home this morning, and, I, and I, we joke about this, Chad, I'm here. So you know, I'm going to share the joke with you, but get straight into it. But we joke, I joke, that when you turn that corner, it's a vacant lot. You come back later and there's a building framed up. You come back the next day and there's cars in the parking lot. And there's balloons outside because they got the grand open. It seems like it goes up like instantaneous. What trends do you see? Do you see a rise, if you will, across the country in industrial real estate being traded? Yes. And there's a very close parallel between the two, actually. They're very well connected between industrial and retail. And I'm sure everybody tuned in is familiar with moving over to e-commerce. I know that I spend more money on e-commerce. I think I did all my Christmas shopping last year entirely on online. There's been a big transition towards e-commerce. It works out to about 20% right now of all do retail dollars spent is 20% is online and 80% is the traditional brick and mortars. Mm -hmm. And so like the actual physical retail stores, I see that trend still continuing to develop and every dollar that gets transferred from being a brick and mortar retail sale to being an online store requires more warehouse space. So that's one of the main reasons we've seen so much distribution uh, space gone up, whether you're in South Carolina, whether you're in California, whether you're in Canada, there's been a ton of warehouse space that's gone up and the vacancy rates are actually quite low. If you're in some port markets, you can be sub 1% vacancy rate. Retail, I think, is going to be interesting. I think a lot of people still enjoy that experience of going to a retail store, whether it's to socialize or see people in person as opposed to sitting in their basement in their pajama pants. I think that there yeah. still is an appetite for people to go in store. Mm -hmm. So I think retail is going to be relatively flat, but industrial should continue to thrive. That is interesting. And the reason I'm going to say that's real interesting is because, well, I say we all been, we roll that back, retailers. Smaller retailers, the mom and pops, all they've been really concerned about. And that's interesting you point that out. They've been concerned about the big box, about e-commerce, about that taking over. And it's interesting to hear you say that 80% is still brick and mortar, that it's still, I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go to the store and I'm not going to let the UPS guy or FedEx guy bring it to me. So that's interesting. 
and what that means for real estate. So what's interesting, regardless, it has to go somewhere. So either the product has to be in a manufacturing facility because it's got to be produced, which means there's a need for real estate space for that. And or it has to be in a warehouse because it's got to be trucked. Everything's got to go on the truck. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, now when they get them helicopters right and they start dropping the packages at your house, eh, that's coming. That's coming. <laughs> so that's going to change that. But everything has to go into a warehouse. So now that's a need in that in, in that sector of industrial. All right. So you got manufacturing, you got industrial. Well, somebody's got to run the operation, which means they got to be in the office. I granted people working from home because everything needs real estate. If you look at it, everything needs real estate. If the person working from home, they're working from a residence. So you need residential real estate. But if they got to go into the office, you need an office space. Mm -hmm. And then for the other sector, other part of the market that's still traditional brick and mortar, where you go in and you look through the aisles or what have you and pick out, ooh, this dress is pretty, or ooh, I like them pants, or man, them shoes look good right there. You still got to have a space for that to happen as well. So there's a need across the board. What's interesting is that you're still seeing that growth, which means that we're consuming more. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And one of the biggest drivers of the economy is population growth. As long as the population is growing, and it can be local, it can be nationwide, if we're seeing population growth, that's going to lead to all types of economic activity. Like you said, more shopping, it's more retail, more manufacturing, more warehousing, more office space. Like I'd be bullish on any market that's having population growth just as a result that it's a key driver. And I'd be a little cautious of markets that are flat or seeing even perhaps a population decline. And Detroit has been a good example of that historically as they peaked the automotive manufacturing heights and then slowly started seeing a decline. So that's a tough market. And I don't know, think that they're even out of the woods yet, even though their population has crumbled. I think that that's the main metric that I would look at for any type of real estate. If you want to see a market increase in residential, commercial, office, industrial, look for population growth first. Do you want something more? More meaningful moments, opportunities, deeper relationships, and memorable experiences? Do you want to make a difference? If you said yes, a career in real estate could be the opportunity you're looking for. Guiding people through one of the most important decisions they ever made. The purchase or sale of their home can be both rewarding and lucrative. Exit Realty has a revolutionary compensation model, training, and technology that provides you with the tools you need to start and build your successful real estate career. Call me today, Mimi Eubanks, your country realtor, at 843-730-3327. That's 843-730-3327 or visit exitlowcountry.com slash join exit and make your exit today. That's interesting. For our listeners, it's been with us for a while. So I'm going to say this to you as I talk to Chad. In our region, we have had a long, over a long period of time, we've had a massive influx of people. Looking at it in smaller increments, it has been a consistent increase and in assistant growth in our population. And along with that, we've had a consistent growth in real estate, in residential homes, in commercial development, in industrial development. We have major manufacturers, all those things, and it follows the people. We oftentimes believe and think that the people follow the real estate, but the real estate follows the people. When the people are coming in, now you need more and you got to develop more and you got to grow more. That's interesting. So for all of our listeners, no matter where you are, you need to factor that in. That's a very useful fact and a point there, Chad, that when you see population growth, population increase, there is going to be an expansion of that real estate market. Boom. That's a mic drop right there. My That's man. a mic drop. And it sounds simple, but a lot of people skip that step. And they just say, well, what are some of the conditions here? I heard something good about this market. I'm going to consider it. And that's fine. Those are all important things you need to factor in. But, and I, I look at a lot of different markets. Step one is, is there population growth? Uh, like that forms the foundation for me to consider other factors, but that's the first step. So uh, your resume says that you have done over 500 transactions. If you can pinpoint, 
the markets that you're seeing the most growth and development in? So the easy one is Texas. And just like some quick numbers, Dallas led the nation last year in industrial development. Just for a quick stacks is staggering. They added 70 million square feet worth of industrial space. That is a lot of space. Led the nation. Most development out of any major city was Dallas. So I like Texas. I think Texas is probably the market that I would be most interested in right now. I still am actively looking for opportunities there myself for my own portfolio. I also like Florida for similar reasons. Population growth. Where are people moving to? They're moving to Texas. They're moving to Florida. They're moving to Georgia. They're moving to the Carolinas. That's where population is going. So I think everything along that East Coast, all the way down to Florida and Texas, I think are outstanding opportunities. And then on the other hand, I'd look at a market like California and I'd be concerned. And if I had bought in that market or New York or Chicago, like some of these markets that have had really high prices for so long, I'd be concerned in those markets because it seems a lot of people are moving out of there. And even if there's some people moving back, that net migration is pretty flat at best. Uh So those would be the markets that I'd be most concerned about. And I like the markets that have population moving to there for that whole reason. Follow the people and real estate comes after it, exactly like you said. So Texas would be number one, Florida, and then up the eastern coast would be other markets that I'd look at as well. Interesting that you say that, Chad. So for a few months ago, I really looked at the connections between markets. When people migrate, they don't want their migration to be difficult. People don't drive across the country like they used to. I'm not saying that people don't do it. A lot of people do it now for the thrill. On occasion, it is what is necessary, but people, oftentimes they don't do it. When they relocate, they're looking for convenience. So a society now that people work more and more remote. So in our market, for example, the Charleston market, we're direct connected to San Diego, LA, San Francisco, I believe San Diego, San Francisco. We're direct connected to Chicago, New York, Louisiana. I think we might have a direct connection in Texas, but there's a lot of markets, large markets that we're directly connected to. And we're seeing people get on these planes in California, come live in South Carolina while they work in California. Hmm. And that migration, again, it brings, like you said, the growth because now we need more houses. Now we need more commercial space because we need more stores. So we're seeing retail explosion. North Charleston for a large time has been the retail capital, if you will, of South Carolina. And we get more and more stores. Now, granted, there's other markets in our state that are catching up now, but it's impressive to me that that particular location, that particular arena area has such a massive commercial development. The airport is in North Charleston though. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that that municipality has such a density of development and, and commercial growth in comparison to other markets throughout the state. So it does really follow the people. And for our listeners, guys, you need to pay attention to this. You need to pay attention to what Chad is saying, because this is going to tell you what you need to know. We sit and we get mad and upset. Now, Chad, you're in a completely different area and you watch people just kind of get, well, I don't want all that growth. That's too many people. We don't want the traffic. We don't want this. We don't want that. And we reject and slow down the progress that's needed to help facilitate effective growth because we need roads and stuff, right? Because you got to get trust. We got a port in Charleston. So they boats that come in, they come in by land, by sea and by air here. So you have to make sure that you have an infrastructure that supports all of that. Some locales stuck. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, land is rail. So some places you can only get commerce in and out by land and by air. Middle of the country. You ain't running a boat in Oklahoma from Asia. You ain't doing that. But you can do that from do that in South Carolina. You can run a boat to South Carolina. You can run a train, car, truck. You can fly a plane here. You can get all those things here. And that's kind of what we've been seeing. And that was a little bit off the topic. But Chad, if you could, for our listeners, as we wrap up today's show, I ask all of our guests, what is that nugget, that thing that you can say, deliver, give information that you could provide that you believe would be useful to our listeners 
in helping them to establish the mindset necessary for them to build and create their legacy? Great question. And I think about this all the time myself, especially as we're going into markets right now where there's legitimate concern. Interest rates have risen. Are we in a recession? All these calamities just worldwide, all the things that you hear, there's a lot of negativity in the world. And I reflect back on this myself. I went through the Great Recession. That was a very tough period. And there's always something in the news. This is what I've realized 18 years in this business now. There's always something in the news. There's always something that will prevent somebody from making a decision because they'll say to themselves, well, this is happening, so maybe I should just wait. There's never an optimal time to start getting into real estate, ever. There's never a perfect time. So instead, what I do myself is take a long-term outlook, find something that you can see yourself holding and investing in for a long period of time. And that's subjective. Long-term might be in 20 years. It could mean five years. I think it's very difficult in real estate to time the market. There's probably people that can do it. They can flip properties and perhaps they've got a better system than others. I myself am a long-term holder. So I try to look past all the negative news. I try to look past what's going to happen in the next year or two, because I don't want to buy real estate to sell that quickly. I want to buy something for legacy, exactly what you're saying. And it's hard to build a legacy if you're buying and selling, buying and selling all the time. It's great for cash flow, but it's hard to get that really sustained wealth versus holding a property for long term and paying off the mortgage and increasing your rents. That to me is legacy building. What I say to myself is ignore to the best of your abilities, what's happening in the market on a day to day basis, and look for markets that you think are going to still be healthy markets 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and take that long term outlook, do your best to mitigate your risk, do the best to see yourself through these short term aberrations where there could be some pressure on it. Take that long term outlook and try to ignore all these short term fluctuations, because there's always going to be short term problems always that's never going away but that trend line if you find a market that you really believe in you find an asset class that you really believe in take that long-term outlook ride the trend line as opposed to like that the really big shifts on a day-to-day or week-to-week basis ignore those look at the trend line for the long term wow i love that real estate is a long ball game got to look at the long ball at the trend and then make your decision from there chad where can our listeners get in contact with you because you dropped some nuggets on them today. Where I put a lot of my attention when I'm not working or raising a family. So it's at Industrialize. So YouTube went to handles now. So it's just at Industrialize on YouTube. You'll find my channel. And most of the topics I talk about are industrial real estate, but I do talk about uh, real estate investing in general. Awesome. I thank you so much, Chad, for being with us on the show. Thank you for being part of the Exit Strategies Radio Show family. To our listeners, guys, look, Y'all got some nuggets today. If you miss anything, I want you to go to ExitStrategiesRadioShow.com to our website. I want you to look for this episode that will be released and available. I want you to go to our YouTube channel, find us on Facebook, do whatever you need to do to get back to this episode so you can get your notes and stuff through it, your bullet points and those questions. Follow Chad, reach out to Chad, ask questions and get engaged because you have the ability to make a difference and an impact in your life. We're here to provide you a vehicle. You need to drive it. You need to be the driver for your family. You need to be the driver for your community. You need to be the driver in your house. Guys, you know how I feel. You know what I say. I'm going to put the two of those things together right now. And I'm going to say, I love you. I'm going to say that I love you. I'm going to say that I love you. And I'm going to see you guys out there in those streets.